Hi kids, I'm Terry Ray, Children's Minister at the Westport Road Church of Christ. I'm glad you've tuned in for our Bible lesson today. You've made a good choice, a good choice to learn more about God. But have you ever made a poor choice or a bad choice? Well, sometimes it's difficult to know the right thing to do. Think about this situation. A friend calls and invites you to play at his house. Dad is on a Zoom meeting and can't be disturbed. Do you go to your friend's house without asking dad? What's a good choice to make? Or how about this situation? When playing a game on your mom's phone, you accidentally drop the phone and the screen breaks. Do you tell your mom about the shattered screen or just slip it back on the counter and hope she doesn't notice? Everyone struggles sometimes when making a good choice. The good news is that God wants to help you to make a good choice. The Bible teaches us to ask God for help when you're faced with a tough choice. People can make good choices. Think about it. People can make good choices. God can help you make good choices. Today's Bible verse reminds us to seek God for wisdom, especially when we face difficulties or trouble. Listen to our verse from Psalms 46.1. God is our protection and our strength. He always helps us in times of trouble. Usually I tell you Bible stories about people who make good choices. Today I'm going to tell you a Bible story about a man named Samson who did not make good choices. He wanted to do things his own way instead of God's way. Even though the story has a sad ending, I think we can learn a really good lesson from this story. I'm turning in my Bible to the Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 13. Let's watch our video and learn about Samson. An angel spoke to Samson's parents before Samson was born. The angel said, your son will be set apart for God's service. You must never cut his hair. Samson was chosen to save Israel from the powerful Philistines. When Samson was grown, he met a Philistine woman and wanted to marry her. Remember, the Philistines are the enemy of the Israelites. On the way to the woman's town, God's spirit gave Samson great power. A lion charged at Samson. Samson stopped the lion with his bare hands. At Samson's wedding, he told some Philistines a riddle about the lion. The Philistines convinced Samson's bride to tell the riddle's answer, and Samson was furious and his marriage was over. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with Delilah, another Philistine woman. Each Philistine leader offered Delilah 1,100 pieces of silver if she could reveal the secret of Samson's great strength. Over and over, Delilah begged Samson for his secret. Finally, Samson gave in. My hair has never been cut, he admitted. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me and I will become weak and be like any other man. When Samson fell asleep, Delilah called a man to cut his hair. Then she cried, Samson, the Philistines are here. Samson did not realize his strength was gone. The Philistines came and captured Samson and blinded him and put him in prison. The Philistines gathered in their temple to honor their false god. They called for Samson to be brought out so they could make fun of him. With God's help, Samson braced himself against the pillars of the temple. He prayed to the Lord, Please remember me. Strengthen me, God, just once more. Samson took hold of two middle pillars supporting the temple and leaned against them, one on his right hand and the other on his left. He pushed with all his might and the temple collapsed. Samson died under the weight of the temple walls and so did the Philistines. Wow, Samson did make a lot of poor choices, didn't he? Instead of using his strength for God's purposes, he used his strength to destroy others. And looking at the broken pillars and the collapsed roof, there were some serious consequences for his choices. The story of Samson is a gruesome story, but we can learn some valuable lessons from Samson's actions. I want to introduce you to my friend Marcus, who is wise beyond his age. In his own words, Marcus tells us that God is our protection and our strength. And God helps us to make good choices. My name is Marcus. Okay. Marcus, 
How does the Bible help you make good choices? Um, when, when you need God's help, use praise Him and, and, and then He'll help you. Why should people choose to obey God? Everybody knows God is stronger than Satan. Marcus, can you tell me a time that you made a good choice? The, the, the time when I made a good choice was um, when, when, when my family would have a family tradition. Every night, we would go out to, to look for fireflies. One, one late night, um, uh, Abby, my um, sister, asked if we could go outside to look for fireflies. And mom said no, but then, but then we came up with a different idea. We, we, we looked for fireflies from the window. Very nice. How do you think God helps you make good choices? When you pray to him and something very important, he's going to help you. What is something that the Bible says people should do? They, they should obey God and never, ever, ever listen to Satan. But everybody knows Santa can't win. He's outnumbered and he's outmatched. Well said, Marcus. God has given us everything we need to make good choices. He's given us his instructions in the Bible. He gave us Jesus' examples to follow. And he gave us the opportunity to pray to him and to ask for help. And we can pray to God any day, any time, at any place. Last week, we met Robert Potter and his missionary family who live in Southeast Asia. The Potters travel from village to village teaching others about Jesus. They also help people in need by helping them clean the drinking water and access medical care. Let's learn more about the Potter family. When William and Nancy Potter first got to Southeast Asia, they were excited to start telling people about Jesus Christ. But they soon found out that many people were too sick or in need to hear the good news they had to share. They realized they had to meet the needs of the people first so they would be ready to hear the gospel. So when we started looking at these human needs and, and issues that we were seeing and started dealing with that and loving our neighbor, providing clean water, um, providing medical care, doing groups around critical needs, felt needs in community, all of a sudden people were like, there's the Jesus people and they care. Jesus people care, not only about hurting bodies, but hurting hearts. The Potters want Southeast Asians to hear about Jesus because he heals hearts and promises those who believe in him forever life in heaven, where there is no sickness and there are no needs. In this particular village, there were only two believers um, when our work started here. And today there's well over a hundred believers. So it's changed a lot here in this community. Now we're seeing similar things happen in distant communities because these believers now are going out to reach new villages. One of the best ways to share the gospel is with words. The potters realized they needed to help people in need so they would be able to hear their words. Now the people hearing and choosing to believe in Jesus are using what they learned from the potters to share with others. Believing in Jesus, no matter where you live, means getting to be a part of sharing Him with those in need and those who need to hear about Him. Praying and giving to global missions are ways we can be a part of the potters' work in Southeast Asia. Pray God will work out ways for the potters to get into new communities to tell people about His Son, Jesus Christ. They don't just open up and say, hey, come on in, tell them all about Jesus. It doesn't work that way. We have to fight very hard to push in the gospel. And so the only way to go about doing that is acts of love, is prayer and is sharing, sharing the word with them. The Potters are making good choices to teach others about Jesus. And two believers in one village have shared the good news of Jesus with others. And now there are many believers in Southeast Asia. Praise God for the Potter family and the good choices that they are making by teaching others about Jesus. I'm gonna sing when you're gonna sing. I'm gonna sing when you're gonna sing. I'm gonna sing when you're gonna sing. And I'm gonna make it to the Lord. I'm gonna shout when you're gonna shout. I'm gonna shout when you're gonna shout. I'm gonna shout when you're gonna shout. And I'll be the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna mutter when my spirit says moan. I'm gonna mutter when my spirit says moan. I'm gonna 
a moan when the spirit says moan. And there's a moan when the spirit says moan. And the bay is the spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray. And the bay is the spirit of the Lord. Boys and girls, that's our lesson today. I leave you with our Bible verse. God is our protection and our strength. He always helps us in times of trouble. Psalm 46, 1. Please join me in a closing prayer. Dear God, we need your help to make good choices. Thank you for your instructions in the Bible and for answering us when we pray. Most of all, thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to live in ways that honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining our worship service today. Parents, there are online resources about today's lesson that your children will enjoy. The resources include an activity page, Bible story video, family conversations, prayer guide, and Mooseberry live action video. Access the link to the LifeWay website and the weekly church email and also the church's Facebook page. Click on the link which will take you to a login page. Choose either preschool materials or elementary school age materials. Again, thanks for joining us today. Blessings to all and please wash your hands.